One of the most powerful customization tools that Samsung provides for their Galaxy devices is not installed by default on your device. And I'm talking about specifically the GoodLock application. Now, if you're new to the channel, you probably obviously haven't heard of this before. My hope is to share with you guys all the new features and all the things that you could do with GoodLock to customize your phone to the next level. I'm talking beyond what you get out of the box. This is TK and this is GoodLock with One UI 6.1 on the brand new Galaxy S24 Ultra. Let's check it out and let's make your device better. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So the app we're talking about today is GoodLock. GoodLock is present right there. This is the app I installed it. That's the one we just launched. The first and foremost thing is how do I download it? How do I get it on my device? It is not installed by default, but this is the Galaxy Store. This is the store that Samsung installs directly on our device. It's more of a, think of it as kind of like a duplicate version of what you have with the Google Play Store with the exception that it's made specifically for Samsung devices. In here, you just need to look for an application called GoodLock. In there, you should be able to find it. It should be the first one that comes on. Once you get it, you just basically install it. Now, GoodLock by itself doesn't do anything to your device other than allow you to have access to these modules, these other applications that are installed. Now, one thing I will mention, some people have asked me in the past, like, hey, I can't find the specific module directly within GoodLock. The simple thing is go back into the, uh, to the uh, Galaxy App Store and search for the app that you're missing. If you feel like you see something in my video and you don't see it, go straight there, look for it. You should be able to install it. An example would be here, one-handed operations. I was going to say one and here, one-handed operations plus. You notice as a module, it's, it's inside of GoodLock. Edge touch is a part of GoodLock. What GoodLock provides us is the ability of launching. It's kind of like an aggregator to all of these functional customization tools that are available for us to be able to use. Now, I will say that there is a section in the device called the Samsung Galaxy Labs. You just go into your device, you go under advanced features, and then from there you go into the labs section. And this is installed. This is by default in there. It may not be turned on, but it is installed. What I'm referring to today is specifically GoodLock. Now, GoodLock has two sections. There's the Makeup and Life Up. They change their names over time, but essentially it's a category of lists of modules. And you'll notice this is basically how many options do you have under the Makeup uh, section. And of course, under life up, life up, we have access to all of these other options. The ones that don't have the little down arrow here on the side means I've already installed them on my device. So all the ones that are on the top have been installed and all the ones on the bottom are the ones that are available. And we're gonna talk about every single one of these options and why I've installed some and not all. First and foremost, we're gonna start off here with the makeup section, we have Theme Park. Now, Theme Park as a module allows me to basically customize my wallpaper and customize the theme on my device based on that. So I can go in there, I can customize, create basically a lock screen, keyboard customization, color schemes, even the color of the toggles, all based on the wallpaper that I choose and I install on my device. And it's simple, it's easy. You can create multiple ones and switch between each ones that you want. Very simple and very easy. Now, if you've watched some of my other content, you probably noticed that on my device, I actually have my logo or the channel logo as my pen. That's because we're using something called Pentastic. This will only work obviously on devices that support S Pen. So the foldables, the tablets, all of those will support this as well. Even if they are just running on One UI 6.0, 6.1 will work just the same. I'm able to customize it. I'm able to customize and change the way the launcher works, customize the actual pointer. I'm even able to customize the sound of what it does. Really nice and very simple, and it makes it very easy for us to use it. Wonderland allows us to create 3D animation or 3D wallpapers, and I really, really like these. An example would be like something like this. Let's go ahead and open it up here. This is something where you're able to bring up a picture from your gallery, customize it. Again, I've been using this uh, AI-generated um, the best way to explain, I just asked an AI tool to generate a, a picture of Goku Ultra Instinct flying through the air and it created this image, which is not bad, but you can set it, basically edit it, change the customization in there, change how the animation is done, center top or uh, to the side, turn it on, turn it off, and of course, preview it and put it on and apply it to your device. Very simple tools, again, don't have these installed, but by default, you really should have access to all of these. And you probably noticed this before when I was using my keyboard. And as I'm typing here, I'm doing all of these and my keyboard is very different. This is the Samsung keyboard. This is the built-in keyboard that Samsung has installed. But by default, this is not part of the customizations that we're able to do here. So if we go in there, we go back into it. This is called Keys Cafe. This enables me to basically customize my keyboard, create new themes, create new keys, even remap the buttons on my keyboard to customize it and play. Obviously, there's games in here. You can customize them. You can change the style of the, the way that your keyboard is running. And of course, create your own keyboard and customize it and allow it to be basically your default one. 
Really, guys, really good, actually, very simple way to be able to customize it. Definitely very nice and definitely one of the ones I'd recommend, especially if you want to be able to, again, get that unique experience there. Now, HomeUp takes this to the next level. If you're using the One UI launcher by default, this is going to give you a little bit more powerful customization options. An example here, home screen, you can change uh, the loop, the favorite maximum count here as far as apps, grid, home grid. This, is, again, takes it beyond what the default bra uh, launcher can allow us to do. Background blur control, a background color control, and of course, hide app icon label if you want to be able to do that. Again, to customize the way the looks of your application show there. Uh, you can even customize folders, change the grid size inside of them, back up and restore your settings from one device to the other. And of course, share manager to be able to change that as your default sharing options that you have. By default, you always get some people in there and you can actually customize that whenever you hit the share button in there. The one that I really, really like is the task manager. By default, if I turn this off, this is Android's basically customization level of the Recents app. I don't have anything to control with it. If I turn this on, you'll notice now that when I go to Recents app, all my apps are basically kind of in a more of a stack configuration. I'm able to customize it, change it to grid. Let's go ahead and bring it back. Boom. I can also change it back and go to say vertical list. Bam. Very easy, very simple. This is by far one of the best options and again, makes it very unique. You can turn on mini mode. You can obviously center the current applications. That's why you always see it in the center. Uh, app label, search bar, recommended apps, all of those things are customizable. And this will transfer over other launchers. I'm using Nova Prime on mine. So for the most part, I just basically do recents. It does the exact same thing. I can see here basically what applications are running in the background that are consistent running. The recents app that I have in here, I'm able to jump into multi-screen, multi-window here. All of those work the way they're supposed to. Very nice and very simple customization. Again, it's called Home Up. It's available directly within the makeup section here under the Keys Cafe. If you install them, it'll be in the order that you have in there. Um, edge Lighting Plus, again, allows us to go in there and customize the lighting or the edge lighting of our device. And it just take, basically customizes the experience a little bit more. Uh, style of keyword, you can change different options in there and what you're, what's going on as far as notification. Uh, if you get a certain message or something like that, you can actually have it pop up with little uh, emojis kind of flying in there. So let's go ahead and go into the style. You notice right there as a message comes in, you can change it into <laughs> almost looks like it's raining or these little icons in there and you can customize and add additional ones. Very simple, again, very easy. It's Edge Lighting Plus. Now, Navstar is a function that is enabling us to actually customize our navigation bar. And that's one thing I really, really like. And the reason behind that is, let's go ahead and look into it a little bit. You can change the standard uh, orientation of how they show on your device. And you can also change them in the order what you want. You can even add a picture of your own in there. If you use the navigation bar, this is definitely one of the nicest one. You can customize it, change the order, put anything you want in there and make it even more functional. Uh, and if you don't, obviously gestures is not compatible there, but this is definitely something cool. Clock face, as it says, pretty much just helps us create a custom clock face for our device that we're able to use on our lock screen. You can go in there, customize them, change them, and create your own unique experience and theme in there running there. Last one is redesign your own quick panel UI. Now, this is what you get in the notification panel, the new quick panel that we bring down. You can go in there, customize it, change it, a simple status menu. You can change the different colors, what the, the thickness, the you know all the different information in there, as well as also the opacity of the background. It's actually a very nice one. And again, just, just so you know, if I want to do this, I'll just click that and it'll download. And once it's download, I'll be able to access it. Under the LifeUp section, this gets a little bit different. One-Handed Operation Plus is one of my favorite tools. It is available directly on the Google Play Store as well as the Galaxy Store. But the reason why this makes sense for me, let's go ahead and go back out of this real quick. I want to show you guys real quick something here. So most smartphones, or at least with Android, if you're using gestures, you just have basically the, the swipe back, right? Now, the swipe back does different things. It's supposed to take us back. For me, I've actually customized this gesture to be more of a swipe down. If I do swipe back, it actually jumps to the application that I was using last. If I do swipe up, now it brings up something here that is basically a mouse cursor. It enables you to basically extend the reach of my hand. So basically when I'm using it in one hand, I can actually reach the upmost left side of the screen to the right side. And then when I'm done, if I want to keep it, I use it. If I don't, I can just close it and it goes away. It's simple, it's easy. I can also do gesture here where I'm able to bring in uh, the media player here, uh, some shortcuts for my notification panel. If I swipe up to the top, I have my recents app and I can go in there and manually close each one. And of course, if I swipe up in the middle, it does the exact same thing. It does jump into the last app. So switching apps, very nice, very customizable. One Hand Operations Plus is existing in there again, download and install it. Multistar is pretty much one of the really nicest things to customize our multi-screen options, but it, I love it because it has options for DeX. If you like to be able to customize the experience of DeX, meaning using high resolution external display, this is going to work the best way. 
Um, auto open the last app if you want to have it automatically launch whenever you turn on Dex. Run many apps at the same time. By default, I think this is on, but this allows us to maybe push it a little bit more. Uh, multi-window screen zoom, uh, multi-focus, remove blur effect, all of the different options that you have in there are very easy. I think for me, multi-star, the reason I installed it again was purely for Dex, but you can definitely take it a little bit more. The camera assistant is by far a must have. I say this because some of the things that you probably didn't realize is by default, when you open up the S24 Ultra, you're probably not gonna see a 10X or you're gonna basically just have this. There is just two X. So if I close, go into the camera application, we'll give it a second to load. I'll basically have the one, the two, the three, and the five. Now. Those are the focal lengths that we have, the lenses that we have. The two is a digital zoom of one, the three and the five are the telephoto lenses that we have on the back. And of course, the ultra wide. But what this app allows me to do, it actually allows me to add these custom options by default that you typically probably didn't have before. If I go back into the camera app, it'll relaunch. And now I have 10X and 100X built in. And I no longer have to basically just, I mean, obviously you could just always do the scroll bar, but now at least you have the shortcuts to be able to jump from one focal length to the other. Simple, easy, you can turn that on. Let's go ahead and actually, oh, we'll go back here. So yeah, we'll go and do it. Back, one more, and I'm back into the action. From there, you can also turn on auto HDR, picture softening if you wanted to turn that off. This allows the camera to run a little bit faster as well. And quick tap shutter, if you've ever noticed that your Samsung device takes a little bit longer to take an image, turn this on, it will disable the multi exposure images that Samsung usually does. And you'll take much faster pictures and you'll basically be as soon as you touch the shutter button, it'll start taking pictures. Prioritize focus over speed. Obviously it allows the, the camera to provide you a better, clearer image. You can turn that on. High resolution mode, you can turn on adaptive pixel and upscale digital zoom if you want to be able to use that. Uh, video recording in photo mode and of course timer for shutter here. Uh, a lot of different customization, camera timeout, dim screen when recording and of course one of the other thing is clean preview on HDMI output. So if you're using a display output using the HDMI port at the bottom, this allows you to actually take out the camera display from the camera and allows you to just provide you to clean preview. You can use that to record directly on your PC if you're using it directly with your PC. It's a very nice little option here, very simple installation. Camera assistant, again, a must have directly within good luck. Now, Registar here, this is really a unique feature that I don't think many companies have or even actually thought about doing. The reason behind that is uh, what I like about this is here. So settings change history, back to, uh, sorry, back tap action, side key, press a hold option here. And of course, customize your home screen, uh, your settings home. So. First and foremost, this is how we see our settings page, right? If I swipe down from the top, let's go ahead and swipe. We're gonna to go to settings. This is basically my settings page, right? But this allows me to actually say, look, I don't really care too much about notification. I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna say save. And what that means essentially, next time I go in here, guess what? Notification is gone. So you're able to customize the experience to the way you want it. Obviously, you can also reorganize them. Let's say you don't wanna have your Samsung account be the top thing, you can move that. Maybe you wanna have software update at the top so you can always check it there and make it run. The same way we were able to customize our toggles here with uh, the other option that we have in there. This allows us to actually have that same level of customization at the notification panel. Very nice and very easy. Change uh, settings, uh, change history, customize your home screen, uh, your settings home, all the different things in there, very nice. Again, Registar is very nice. It's kind of like a registry uh, editor, works really good. The next one we're gonna talk about is Sound Assistant. Now, I do wanna say this real quick. So here, let me just turn on, uh, let's turn it on here. Actually, I'm gonna turn it off because I want you to see how it looks like. By default, if you touch the volume rocker, you're gonna get this little three dots. You get to see the standard, uh, basically sound menu. This also may be also customized from the original version. Once I turn it on here, and this, this becomes really crazy, look. I can turn it on here and now I actually have Bluetooth configuration. I can configure which audio uh, system goes in. I can also turn on uh, the tele, basically the transcription option so that I can actually listen to audio. We're also able to see the different customization. Let's go ahead and bring it back one more time. And what I like about it is that let's say we go in there and we click on it. And if I wanna go into the settings or the settings of sound assistant, by clicking this, it'll take me directly into the sound section here. We can customize it. Uh, media manager, how many steps do you have on the volume control, controlling music with your volume keys, and of course, choosing which one is your favorite music app. By default, obviously, we have a music player built in. This allows us to specifically call out, let's say for me, YouTube music. I can actually put it in there. And I'm now using the volume rockers when I'm playing songs, pressing and holding on volume up and volume down, allow me to skip and go back on songs when we're listening to them. Of course, customizing the uh, vibration pattern, customizing obviously the, the advanced settings, all of those things that we get in there are beautiful. And this makes it, uh, again, one of the must-have modules to install. 
Now, the last ones that we're going to take a look here are a few things. So we have Routine Plus. This allows us to customize routines into our on our device. You can go in there, customize them, put them in there. Certain specific things that will happen when you basically initiate a specific routine. The next one is Nice Catch. And this is a very functional one in the sense of if you ever notice that your device is doing some things, but you're not sure what's causing it. Nice Catch kind of keeps a record of everything that's going on and he provides you a report so you can actually find out exactly what's going on. Let's say there's an app running in the background that's sending notifications, but you don't know which one. Or there's a pop-up coming in front of you on a screen, but you don't know which app is pushing it. This will allow you to see that. The next one here, we obviously have Edge Touch, which is another functional option that enables to customize the Edge uh, experience on our device. And you can change the different thickness and allow or minimize uh, you know, false touches in there. Now, Naughty Star allows you to basically customize or see your notification history and it keeps an aggregate list of it. So in a way, it's kind of a, even though you've dismissed something from the notification panel, but let's say you wanted to see that again without opening the app, Naughty Star will allow us to actually do that because it keeps a list of all your notifications and you can jump back into them from there and bring them back. Very good and very simple. And the last one, Obviously, as it says, nice shot allows us to customize our screenshot functionality as well as the ability of how we record our screen recording. What I really like about it is it actually customizes it so we don't even have a delete button or a trash bin on our screenshot functionality in there. And of course, the ability of changing uh, the custom options here for background selfies, video resizing screens, all of those are very, very nice. The one thing I'll say that I'm really happy to see is support for good luck nowadays has been basically put in almost on day one. In the past, we've always had to wait for good luck to get upgraded to the new generation. But I actually had access to good luck with 6.0 when I was running the beta on with my S23 Ultra. So the biggest thing I'll probably say is first things first, when you set up your account, you transfer all your information, you downloaded, you installed all your apps, download good luck from the Galaxy Store and start customizing. The ones that I showed you are my preference. You may find things that you not you don't like or may find things that you want to try. If you see something missing, go directly into the uh, Galaxy Store and try to look for the actual app itself. Again, good luck is for the most part a launcher, not necessarily a there's no modules inside. It actually doesn't do anything to the system. What it does is it provides us a landing page so that we can go in there and customize. Also, if there is an update to a specific module when you open up GoodLock, there'll be a little button on the right side where we were clicking it to download. And it also allows us basically to update it directly from there without having to go into the Galaxy Store app or App Store in there. So with that being said, I don't know why Samsung doesn't put this in our devices. I really hope that at some point, GoodLock becomes a standard application installed. I also don't know why this is not available internationally, so some areas may not have it. If you don't have it, please let us know. I'd like to know exactly uh, where are some of the areas that don't have it. I do know that it's rolling out to more areas in the world, so this is something that's very encouraging. So. Good luck, again, is by far the most powerful customization tool that Samsung makes for our Galaxy devices. And I hope that you enjoy this and you find this very helpful. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.